This absolute monster of a vehicle next to me is the 2023 Ram 1500 Bighorn Backcountry. I feel like I should have a cowboy hat when I say that, but I don't have time to find one, so you're gonna have to deal with my messy hair. But today I'm gonna show you absolutely everything there is to know if you're interested in one of these big boy trucks. This is the backcountry package. It's more of like an entry level package for the Bighorn. I had some trouble finding it on the Dodge website. I actually couldn't find it at all. So I'm gonna go with what I think is in this. I think it gives us a little bit better features. I know it's an entry level trim, but it does give us this really nice look. It gives us this nice burgundy red color with this chrome delete and this blacked out trim all around the body. It looks super nice. And you'll see that as we do the tour. And you also have things like digital rear view mirror. You have improved outside look, like we just said. And then you have a little bit more off-road capabilities because this is built for the off-road. Let's take a look under the hood of the Bighorn Backcountry. We have a V8 5.7 liter Hemi that does 395 horsepower, 410 pound-feet of torque, and you also get an eight-speed transmission. The Bighorn has a towing capacity of 12,750 pounds and a max payload of 2,300 pounds, which is pretty decent. And this thing could really handle, I think, anything you could throw at it. With that being said, let's take a look at the rest. As usual, taking a look at the front of the Bighorn first, you got this nice blacked out. There's no chrome on here at all. And I love that the blacked out is the way to go. Blacked out Ram badge all the way on the bottom. Nice tow hooks, a bunch of sensors because we do have lots of parking sensors in here which is great because this thing is huge and you need to know if you're getting close to something because you can't always see the front end i really like the curvature of the design here in the front really aggressive looking i like the daytime running leds the main headlamps too are very effective led they are not halogen take note for it and then on the side here of the hood we have a 1500 hemi 5.7 liter badge which is nice to see it, it is black so you're, you really have to get close to see it but i'll take it and this front end just looks like it can handle absolutely everything and i love it Taking a look at the side profile of the Bighorn Backcountry, you can see for a comparison, look, this is my arms and it's absolutely massive. You got huge 33 inch wheels on this thing. Nice Ram badging. Again, we continue with the zero chrome, all blacked out trim on the bottom. I, I love this so much. Like it just, it's just clean. It's just as clean as it can be. Unfortunately, you have to click your key fob to unlock the door. There's no lock and unlock automatic button here. Nothing like that. If I put my hand here, it still does nothing. That's unfortunate. Nice Ram badging there, huge mirrors. I mean, this is a big car, so everything on it is gonna be absolutely massive. And that's to be said for the mirrors too. Nice little step here. Take note again, Ford, because look at this, we can get up and get in because this vehicle's high and it's modified for the off-road. And for off-road, you need something to step on before you get in. Maybe something to bang your shoes on wouldn't hurt either. And you can see that the crew cab here is really big. And then we kind of have a little bit of a shorter bed back here, but I'll take it for what it is. It's very nice. Let's, look, let's take a look at the back. So taking a look now at the back of the Bighorn and right there you have a Bighorn badge to show you. Like I said, huge car, huge logo. I love that. You got your trailer hitch there and some trailer controls there for the lights. Then you have two dual exhausts. They're really big, but the sound unfortunately isn't what I would, was expecting. Cause when I saw the big exhaust, I was like, oh, this should have a really throaty sound. Not really, it's rather quiet, but nice four by four badge here and a little bit of a nice black on the headlight where the turn signal is. That's very nice as well. Then you have your backup camera here and then you have a camera just up there, just where the passenger row is. And that's for the digital rear view camera. So I can open this back here. It's really, really light. Like it's super lightweight, opens very nicely, very, nice and gently as well. And then you have plenty of room, plenty of wide room too. And then you got this nice soft top thing that does come right up, no problem. And it's just ready to get dirty. So with that being said, let's take a look at the interior. So here I am on the interior of the Bighorn backcountry. And let's just start with the driving controls. Well, the main driving control is the steering wheel and it's huge. I like the big Ram logo here. It's very nice. Then you have a gear selector. That's the knob. You've probably seen it before. It's funny. Ram hasn't really changed their interiors too much, but I don't know if they need to quite yet. Yes, they are kind of falling behind. I think maybe in terms of technology and I'll, and I'll explain why, but I think that if it's not broken, you don't really need to fix it. And I think Ram are still selling their trucks like crazy. So they're not going to fix it anytime soon. Overall, I like sitting in the interior. It's a nice place to spend time. I got a nice digital gauge cluster here. That's a mix of digital and analog. It's big enough. The screen, it gives me enough information. And then I have my analog sides if I want to, in this case, like usually I say do one or the other, but in this case, Ram have done it really well. They've, they obviously have enough room cause it's a big car. So the room in here is good to have both and it works seamlessly and well, no glitches or anything. I got some light controls on my right hand side here. And then I have this little interesting button 
where I can lift up or push down the pedals according to how I feel comfortable. And that's really cool. I've never driven a car like that before, so it's really nice to have that feature. Now here's where I say it's a little bit dated. This is like an eight inch touchscreen here in the middle and it's cool, it works, but it's small by today's date. I mean, today's date, yes, and we can definitely say that we're spoiled because we are, but by today's date, I have to say it, it is small, but the infotainment system is usable. I like the way it's, it's very seamless. It's very simple, just like a lot of the other cars we've driven. At least they have that down. It's not laggy. It's not glitchy. And it has wireless CarPlay, wireless Android Auto, which is excellent. You know I like that. So moving a little bit lower here, you got nice volume controls, nice matte black buttons for everything. Meant to get dirty, meant to be easy to clean. So I love that. Heated seats, heated steering, of course. We love that here in Canada. But no ventilation dual zone climate control as well which is nice to have and then even lower than that you have like this trailer control you have trailer steering so i have this little knob that i believe once i have something connected unfortunately i don't have anything that i can tow right now but once i do have something connected i can turn this knob and it will turn the steering wheel according to which direction i want to go because it's it's strange driving a trailer i have no idea how to properly do it i am not that advanced in truck driving at all so having something like this and then having something that I need to tow completely gives me peace of mind. And I love that. So great addition there. Moving all the way up. There's no sunroof, unfortunately. It's just black cloth up here. But I do have a digital rear view camera. And in a truck that's big like this, it is so great. I've loved it. I'm never going to turn it off. I love that automakers are starting to include that. I'm starting to see that a lot more. Love it. Please keep doing it. It's great. And then I have a button here as well to open my rear window. That's automatic back there. Very nice little touch. The rear of this car is what impressed me. From the outside looking in, I don't know, maybe you could tell that it's a massive rear. I'm surprised people don't live in these things. It's so, so big. I got like even two cup holders back there. Oh, there's a whole bunch of leg room back there. Uh, I'm 5'11", and I can fit back there like almost two of myself. It's, it's ridiculous. It's like so much leg room. You'd think it was an EV. It's really comfortable back there. This is the exact configuration I'd get if I was going for the RAM because I don't move stuff around, but I do like the size of the RAM. So having that rear seat just being like, like damn near livable, you know, and that's a joke. I'm not saying live in your RAM, but I, you know, teach their own. If you want to do that, go ahead. But that's going to do it for the interior. Let's take this big boy on a test drive. All right, so here we are inside the Ram 1500 Bighorn Backcountry. Again, I really need that. I know Niall has a cowboy hat. I should have got him to send it to me for this video. But anyways, so far this week, it's been it's been a nice ride. And the only truck I have to compare this car to is the Ford Ranger. This is the only one I really drove. And obviously, they're not in the same league. But, you know, you could say that Ford and Ram are in direct competition all the time for the truck game. So... To me, obviously, I take this one over the Ford Ranger. This Ram is extremely comfortable to be in. The seats are really nice. On the highway, it's super comfortable. I do kind of still get that kind of body oscillation when I go through huge bumps, but it's not that bad. And it's not frequent, surprisingly. It's It really has to be a big pothole that I have to put my tire in for me to kind of feel like I have it through the whole body. But the good news is that the suspension doesn't make me feel like I'm in a dryer or like a washing machine and I'm not getting tumbled around by it. It kind of just takes the hit and rolls with it. You know, it doesn't kind of do all this movement with the body. So that's really nice. Overall, I've enjoyed the feeling of the steering wheel. I just enjoyed being in the car. Like, it, you know, it's, it's one of those ones that the ride is really smooth, especially on the highway. So it's hard to fall, to not fall asleep sometimes, especially when it's like, like I work at five in the morning. So like I'm up super early and it's like, man, this truck will put you to sleep in the best way, you know? So it's good. I mean, if you're the passenger and you're on a road trip, well then, you know, you could obviously sleep to your heart's content and this truck will not wake you up and hit a huge bump and like you know it's it's really smooth really nice i really like the the way that the transmission feels too you know obviously it's a big truck so cornering is not going to be a thing that you're going to do well in this in this kind of truck but it doesn't matter because you're not buying it for that so that's fine there now this v8 hemi is thirsty it's almost like it's in a constant competition with itself to see just how much fuel it could actually use right now i am sitting at let me get it for you i am sitting at 16.4 liters per 100 kilometers and i've driven about 400 kilometers this week and i reset everything as soon as i get inside the car it's like my my checklist reset trip info reset fuel economy boom so i'm starting at zero and it's me that it's modeled after 
and I haven't been driving the car crazy. I haven't, like, there, there isn't even a sport mode in here. So I haven't been going nuts. I haven't been mashing the throttle. I, I've been, like, by all purposes, trying to save fuel because it's a big tank in here. Like, a full tank, when I got in the car, I had, like, 800 kilometers, which is great. But with the gas prices being so expensive and this thing drinking so much fuel down, like it's, you know, like it's absolutely nothing, then it's kind of a problem a little bit, you know, because I mean, I guess you expect it because it doesn't have any eco boost. There's nothing going on there. There's no eco here. It does tell me that I'm in eco mode right now because I'm like coasting and it does that. It gives me a small eco sign, but I don't know how much that does because honestly, I don't think it makes so much of a difference because I am just using fuel like you wouldn't believe. And I guess you expect that if you're in the market for one of these vehicles, so you kind of already know that's coming your way and you know you anticipate it, so it's not gonna be such a big deal if you know, but if you're looking for a fuel efficient truck, I'm sorry to tell you that the Ram Bighorn Backcountry is not the one. So this car does have different drive mode. It doesn't have like a sport mode or anything, but it does have your four, four wheel drive auto, your two wheel drive, four wheel drive low, four wheel drive high. So let me just do a little performance as I'm in, I'm in traffic today, there's cars everywhere, uh, but I'll put it into four wheel drive auto so I get all the power I possibly can while I'm slowing down here. Just I just don't really wanna piss the guy off too much, but we'll go and we'll do a little bit of a rolling star performance test. Let me punch this all the way to the ground, please. Here we go. And yeah, you know, it's not that instant torque that you saw last week. It's, I feel like the Ranger might have had the edge there because, but again, the Ranger's much smaller. It's a nice noise when you punch it, but just general driving, I don't hear the exhaust. But when I punched it there, like when I really put my foot to the floor like this, there's a nice little noise that comes from it. And it's actually not a bad, takeoff either it's just not like instant it's not gonna blow your pants off it's not gonna make you change your underwear nothing like that but passing slower traffic is good but also every time I put my floor my foot to the floor I use about $80 so like is it worth it I don't think so one another thing I think is also worth mentioning is that for some reason then I don't know if other Ram owners find this as well and I'm sure you'll let me know in the comments as you always like to do and I love hearing from you so let me know if you have this Ram owner specifically like when I'm on the highway when I'm driving at high speeds the throttle feels like heavy and I'm not in sport mode like I like even in in four-wheel drive mode but I think it actually happens more in two-wheel drive mode where the throttle feels a lot more heavy and it's like, I'll be going 100, and then to get it to go to 110, I feel like I have to really push the pedal further than like, normal, further than I'm used to. It could be just a thing on this version of the vehicle, I don't know, but let me know if other people find that. I just found it weird. It's not like, there's not a delay in throttle response. It's just like, it's heavy. You have to push it down to really get it to give you the power. It's almost as if it's like, hey, if you go any further, I'm gonna use about another $90 of gas. So, you know, you really, it's like an are you sure box kind of thing with the throttle. I don't know, it's just really weird. The brakes, however, are perfectly fine. I've adjusted the steering wheels. I mean, I've adjusted the pedals with that little button here, like I mentioned on the interior tour, to be just very comfortable. I sit closer, I, for some reason in pickup trucks, I tend to sit closer, because I like to be able to see the front end just a little bit better. And, you know, just because I'm a big freaking thing on the road and I don't want to hit anything or anyone, and damage the car or myself or anybody else. So, you know, I just like to sit a little bit closer, but I like the fact that I could adjust the pedals to be a little bit further back instead of the seat. So I can have a good seating position and then my legs don't get cramped up. Excellent work. This car also has like a pretty nice heads up display. Like it's super simple. I have my lane keep assist on. I know a lot of people like to drive with it off, but personally, when I have a big car like this that I'm not used to driving, that I don't always drive all the time, I'll put it on and it does help you. Especially me, it's been helping me all week. Like, you know, if you kind of drift a little bit and you don't realize it'll, it'll gently push you back in the lane. It won't like yank the steering wheel out of your hands and be like, absolutely not. It, it, it's just a very gentle yank, recenters you in the lane and you can keep going. So that's great. So I mentioned the heads up display and since my lane keep assist is on, I can kind of see how far to one side I'm going because it'll give me like an orange line if I'm going over any, any given lane. Like right now I have to pass this cyclist so it will tell me, boom, it's telling me that no good but I have to do it. So I kind of force the steering wheel just a little bit 
but all good. And then also it'll tell me what uh, road I'm on. It'll tell me my speed limit, obviously, and then it'll tell me the speed limit of the roads around me. Very interesting. And it's in a perfect position. It's not that cheap plastic thing that I've said in the past that I don't like. It's perfectly plastered onto the, the windscreen here and I like it. I don't turn it off. I don't find it distracting. I find it just perfect for what it is. Now, I know this car is built for the off-road, but unfortunately that's just one of the things I can't test. Well, sort of. I mean, you can consider the Quebec normal public roads off-roading because they're absolutely atrocious, especially after winter. Disgusting, can't stand them. There's bumps everywhere, there's huge potholes everywhere. So like, I'm semi-off-roading all the time on these Quebec roads. So I mean, and for that, the suspension, like I said in the beginning, has handled it very well. I've been very comfortable the whole time. Even even when hitting big bumps, it's way better than what I had in the Ford Ranger. I'm not in a washing machine or a dryer. It's great. And I also can't test the towing. I really want to test that. In the summer, I might have the opportunity to do so if I get my hands on another Ram or another truck in general. I might be able to show you what it looks like when it tows stuff. That's kind of a shot I really want to get and something I really want to be able to test. So hopefully in the future, I will be able to do that. But I think that is going to do it for the Ram. Final thoughts are the color is incredible. The black and like the nice burgundy. This is the exact trim I'd probably get if I was in the Ram, in the market for a Ram. It is a little bit on the expensive side around like the $60,000, $65,000 range. That's expensive. Trucks are expensive. Everything is expensive nowadays, honestly. But for what it is, it's very comfortable. Suspension is great. The power is there, V8 Hemi, you just have to be willing to sacrifice a little bit of money in that wallet because boy does this thing like to drink that fuel down. So if you're okay with that, then this thing is absolutely ready for the off-road, ready to get dirty, ready to be clean easily, comfortable, got power. There's really you know not a lot of bad to say about it besides the fact that maybe the interior is a little bit dated, maybe Ram needs to upgrade it, and I know that they will. I'm not worried about them. They will catch up to their competition because Ford is maybe just a little bit more ahead in that area with the F-150 stuff, but they're coming. They got that new electric vehicle coming. So, you know, we should have some cool stuff coming from Ram in the future. And that's going to do it for the video before I ramble on for too much longer. You must subscribe if you've made it this far into the video. There's no choice. It's absolutely obligatory. Have to click that button. Now we'll be back eventually with some more interesting dealership stuff. And like I always say, there's nobody that does it better than us on YouTube here, and you can buy the cars that he shows you most of the time. So go ahead and check that video he has on the Range Rover, super nice car that he's reviewed there. So check that one out. And with that being said, leave a like, let me know what you think of the comments. Are you in the market for around 1500? And we'll see you in the next video. Take care.